esteemed colleagues, it is indeed an honor to join you today, albeit virtually. I bring you spice-filled greetings and warmth on behalf of the government and people of Grenada. Brother Ron Daniels, thanks to you and your team for inviting Grenada to be in this house tonight and share in so proud and dynamic a gathering of global black leaders, national elected officials, organizers, media workers, women, and most of all, young persons. I extend a special welcome to all millennials and especially Generation Z participants in this year's conference. We need your passion and fearlessness as we continue this journey towards peace, justice, and prosperity. Today, I have been granted the immense honor to lead a tribute to our national Grenadian hero, world-renowned revolutionary and pan-African icon, Maurice Bishop, who embodied the potential and power of young people to drive the change we wish to see in the world. Becoming Maurice Bishop, the pan-African icon. Maurice Bishop was born on May 29, 1944, in Aruba, an island in the Dutch Caribbean, to Grenadian parents who, like many Grenadians at the time, sought to improve their financial position by working in the oil refinery. Maurice moved to Grenada with his parents in 1950, at the age of six, attending primary and secondary school on the island amid a time of great agitation and a social justice movement for improved wages and conditions on the plantations which spilled over across the wider society. Black skins, black faces, and most women were excluded from premier institutions and from top positions in banks and front offices, the governor's office and parliament, and even from the island's tennis courts. These social agitations of the 1950s dislodged some racial barriers won adult suffrage and raised consciousness that better was attainable with a fight. The Bishop family valued education and political activism, traits that were passed on to a young Morris. He read widely with his revolutionary writers and analysts, such as Franz Fanon, Walter Rodney, and C.L.R. James, sharpening his thinking. In 1963, Maurice moved to London to study law and soon became involved in left-wing political activism. During this period, he studied the works of Marx, Lenin, and Stalin, and traveled to socialist Czechoslovakia and the German Democratic Republic, where he developed connections with other socialist leaders of the time. In 1970, at the age of 26, Maurice returned to Grenada and quickly became a leader in the country's burgeoning socialist movement. In 1973, the New Jewel Movement, or NGM, was formed, which sought to challenge the corruption and authoritarianism of the existing government and to present an alternative vision of national development. Later that year, as Maurice's influence grew and tensions in the country began to rise, Maurice and other leaders of the NGM were arrested and beaten. And a few months later, his father, Rupert Bishop, was shot and killed as he protected demonstrating school children from state terror. Under Maurice's leadership, the NGM gained significant support among Grenadians who were tired of poverty, inequality, and political oppression. In 1979, the NGM would successfully lead a peaceful coup against the ruling government, and Morris became the Prime Minister of Grenada. Once at the helm of governance, he quickly set about implementing a program of social and economic reform, including nationalizing key industries and implementing policies to improve education, healthcare, and housing for all Grenadians. Maurice's vision for a just and equitable society, 
where citizens were free to achieve their full potential without fear, spoke to ideals that resonated with Grenadians, but also spoke to all peoples that were struggling against oppression worldwide. He believed that the fight for liberation in the Caribbean was part of a larger struggle for African liberation across the globe. Maurice Bishop, a people's leader who hammered at the pathetic edifices of injustice on a global scale, people of color, and especially black people, have experienced the brutality of injustice so uniquely, so profoundly, and so painfully that the journey to restore our humanity continues to be a deep and collective undertaking. As a predominantly black nation, we in Grenada needed the giant that Morris Bishop was, the voice that he found buried within him, the ideals he could so sincerely champion, the revolutionary team that he so ably led, and the global solidarity that poured out to hammer down deeply and powerfully at the pathetic edifice of injustice, poverty, and other violations of people's sovereignty that history had left us in 1979 only five years independent from Britain. He took up that challenge and remained eternally grateful. The truth is that Morris Bishop and the Grenada Revolution, which he led, are both parts and parcels of the long continuum of history to move away from injustice, beyond the brutality of oppression, and be bearers of torches that light our ways to full freedom. Morris's persona and message, and the struggle he led in Grenada, resonated with so many for that reason. He spoke to a primal yearning to reclaim our common humanity of dignity and respect. Bishop and the Grenada Revolution, 1979 to 1983. The Grenada Revolution took up a whole of society causes is freedom we making. People's power for a participatory democracy inspired popular slogans that said it all and captured it all. The revolution set out to uproot injustices against the people with free education and decent public health care, with increases in wages, wage equity, and the social wage, with rapid job creation and agro-industrial development. The critical input was incessant support and inclusion, as well as appeals to ordinary people, rural Grenadians and workers of all stripes, urging them to take control of their lives and communities and find empowerment for transformation in themselves and their collective actions. Yes, the Grenada Revolution of 1979 to 1983 blundered, but it was Grenada's authentic, sovereign attempt at finding its way out of a history of colonialism and slavery and into the light of a true post-emancipation, post-colonial freedom. Many of you in the room here tonight extended solidarity to Grenada's revolution through visits and seeing and assessing the country's progress for yourselves. You shared information and called for solidarity for us from others. On behalf of all Grenadians then and now, I say thank you for the love and respect, the political support and solidarity that African Americans, Caribbean Americans, and Grenadian Americans gave to Brother Bish and our beloved Grenada. The successes achieved belong to you as well. Bishop, an inspiration for NDC's transformation an eternal champion for humanity. Colleagues, since its founding in 1990, my party, the National Democratic Congress, has joined the honorable struggle for a better Grenada. On June 23, 2022, we were elected to office for the third time by the people of Grenada, and we have since embarked on a rigorous program of transformation. I genuinely believe that there is no better tribute we can pay to someone that inspires us than to emulate them. And so we have. 
As an administration, we continue to lean on many song policies of the revolution, adapting and strengthening to suit our current realities. We want to believe that if Maurice was alive, he would be proud of us and maybe even join us. We share the vision he so well articulated when he told the people of Grenada, and I quote, this revolution is for work, for food, for decent housing and health services, and for a bright future for our children and great-grandchildren, unquote. Forty years after the demise of the Grenada Revolution, our transformation agenda seeks to bring this vision to fruition. Our campaign paid tribute to Morris Bishop and his fallen comrades, parish by parish. And now that we govern, our social and people-centered programs, including our frequent town hall meetings to dialogue with citizens, is our way of paying tribute to the democratic innovation of making space for people at the center of our process, a hallmark that the revolution left Grenadian democracy. Morris Bishop was and remains a glorious inspiration to all of us. His people, peoples of African descent and humanity on a whole. What we are doing in Grenada today owes so much to his vision, his organization, his team, and the people of Grenada. Bishop, a champion for humanity. 44 years have passed, yet the timelessness of Bishop's leadership remains. The democratic process he articulated in word and deed for us at home, for the black world, and for all humanity, and his pleas to the international community are all alive and relevant. In his maiden address to the United Nations in September 1979, stressing the challenges posed by colonialism, neo-colonialism, and imperialism, Bishop called for a new international order, one in which the just needs and aspirations of small states, such as Grenada, could be met. Today, that call is still relevant because we live and struggle in a world of complex multipolarity with systemic injustice, its leading feature. This world is bedeviled with multiple crises, from climate change to global health emergencies, to debt unsustainability, the threat of nuclear war, and the continuing exploitation of the developing countries. Who the leading power brokers are, and how many there are, may have changed, but the fundamental undemocratic nature of the international relations has not improved. So, the work continues. Good, hopeful work. Because there is also a world shining with points of promise for bending the arc of all history towards justice and toward freedom. Reparations for the crime and sin of slavery is beginning to be heard in European capitals and amongst European families. The proposal for climate justice via the Bridgetown Initiative is getting a hearing. Black people are holding power in diasporas worldwide, and Generation Z are stepping into economic spaces with enthusiasm. We can learn from the Grenada's 20th century hero par excellence, Morris Bishop, that leading a small island, leading a predominantly black people, is a continuous labor of love, hope, and solidarity. As our national hero, we again call for the body of Maurice Bishop and that of the many fallen comrades killed with him to be returned to their families. Maurice Bishop's personal qualities, his uncommon vision and his unwavering leadership made him serve people and nation, serve the Caribbean region and black people everywhere. Indeed, he led with conscience to see the need to write the wrongs of history. He led with conviction to lead our nation to act, clarity to see and lift our people as the real agents and subjects of change, candor to call people to transform themselves, and courage to speak truth to power at home and abroad. 
As we approach the end of the decade for people of African descent, 2015 to 2025, let us continue to work together to achieve its goals of recognition, justice, and development, to end colonialism and racism, and end oppression and injustices. Maurice may no longer be with us, but his vision and legacy burn fervently in the memories and actions of those of us here present and will continue to live after we are gone. In the great continuum of history, Maurice Bishop played his part before he died at age 39. Now, so must we. Thank you, Morris. Your spirit lives on. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you very much. Super,